recording now? Yes. Hello, Sophia. Well, here's a thought. My guess is no one looks at these videos except maybe the person who is absent. So, if you're a human being <laughs> and you're not in my AP physics class, <laughs> You and you're watching this right now. I want you to. What's something they could do? Leave a comment. Oh, leave a comment <laughs> in YouTube that says I watched it and I'm not in your class. But I don't think anybody does. Okay, we'll see if we get any comments. Hold on. <laughs> don't you all comment and pretend to be somebody else? Don't do that. I'll never know. Do you ever read your comments? <laughs> Uh, I didn't know there were comments. So no, <laughs> no, I've never read a comment. Okay, uh, here's here are my three questions we're starting out with today. Number one, okay, before I give you three questions, let's make sure you remember what you've learned. The first law of thermodynamics is delta U equals what? Q plus what? W. No, we, w. We're going <laughs> to... We, we haven't talked enough about those things, and plus we're going to quantify it today. But first I'm going to ask you these three questions. Number one, um, if you have the gas trapped in a piston like we talked about yesterday, here's a, here's a cylinder and there's a piston at the top. That's a little better way to say it. Uh, and it's a movable piston and the gas molecules are trapped in here. Okay. If you add heat but the piston does not move. All right. You put a flame underneath it, heat goes into the gas system, into the system. The gas is the system. But the piston is, is forced to remain in place. Someone's holding it there. It doesn't go up or down. All right, here are my questions. First of all, how much work was done I haven't given you any numbers, but is it positive, negative, or zero? Work. W. What, Sarah? Positive. What were you saying? Positive. What'd you say? Oh, that's not right. I'm sorry. Who is negative. not positive? How much was work positive, negative, or zero? That's the question. What? It is zero. How do you know it's zero? Piston didn't move. If I push down on it, I, I did positive work on the system. If it, if it pushes up, it loses joules. That's negative work. But if it doesn't move, work is zero. Okay. So in that scenario, work is zero. Um, what, is, what is delta U? Uh, yeah, what is delta U? And I'm just asking positive, negative, or zero. We don't have any numbers yet. Is there a change in U? If, if so, is it positive or negative? Or is there no change? It's zero. Positive. Why do you say positive, Jaden? Because it increases temperature. Yeah, but you, you put the flame down here. So if heat goes in, then, then it has to be positive. And look up here. We just said W was zero, didn't we? Mm -hmm. So if you're adding heat to it, which was what I said in the question, then there has to, and that's then that's a positive number. Heat's going in, so that's a positive number, right? So delta U is positive. All right. If uh, or what is what is delta V? That's in the question, so that's not a hard one. What's that? Zero. Zero, because the piston didn't move. The volume didn't change. All right. What is what is the change in pressure? Is that positive, negative, or zero? What do you think, Nate? Pressure. Does it change? If it does, is it positive or negative? You added heat. Piston does not move. Heat flows into the gas. Does the pressure change? Yes. Positive or negative? Positive. Yes. If heat goes into it, this is just conceptual right now because we haven't talked enough about work. But the concept is if heat goes in, the molecules start moving faster, don't they? But you're not, you're not allowing the thing to expand. 
if you were, then the gas would expand and the molecules would get farther apart. But since, since you're not, but they're moving faster, they're going to be hitting the walls more often, aren't they? You've got to be able to explain things in terms of molecules uh, occasionally. And that's what's going on here. So heat goes in, molecules move faster, but the gas cannot expand. They're, because they're moving faster, they will, in the same amount of space, they will hit the walls harder, increasing the pressure. So that's positive. In this scenario, that's a positive number, meaning the pressure goes up. Okay, uh, and what would this look like on a PV diagram? Pressure, volume, if it say it started right here, what, what direction would the line go as the heat is going in? Straight up. Yeah, because the pressure is increasing up, but the volume's not changing at all. So those are the two things you look at there. Okay, see how easy these questions are? Let's do a, a second scenario. This time I push down on the piston, and it moves down. The piston moves down, but there is no heat. Uh, there is neither heat that goes in nor out. You're not heating it. You're not cooling it. All right. Now. What is work now? Is it positive, negative, or zero? Negative. What do you think, Sarah? Work. Is it here? Easy question. Is work zero? No. See, that's true. Now, is work positive or negative, Claire? Why do you say that? Yeah, that's what you learned yesterday. You're putting energy into the system by pushing down on it. You're adding joules of energy to the gas. And so, in this scenario, work is positive. <coughs> um, what about delta U, then? Is it positive, negative, or zero? What do you think, Steve? Here, before you answer that, Steve, what about Q? Is, uh, from what I just told you, is Q positive, negative, or zero? From what I told you in the question. What did I tell you about heat? What did I tell you, Steve, about heat? Does heat go in or come out? Neither. Neither one. So, if that's zero, now back to this question, what is delta U? What is delta U, Kyle? Positive. Positive. Look at the equation. You just said Q is zero and work is positive. If that's zero and that's positive, that has to be positive, doesn't it? Yes. Yeah. Okay. So you push down on it, the energy of the system increases. That should make sense too. You can imagine, oh, you push down on it. I bet they're moving faster now. There's something going on. What about change in volume? It's what? Negative. Negative, because it got smaller. The volume got smaller. What about change in pressure? Would the pressure go up or down or stay the same? Would go up. It's probably going to increase because there's less space. Uh, now, you didn't add any heat to it, but there's less space. Same number of molecules. They're going to bump into each other more often. And, and, that, and, and more collisions. There'll be more collisions because there's less space. More collisions with the container means more pressure. So that's positive. Do I have another one of these? Yeah, what if you add heat, or is, here, here's the question now. If, if, if I, the, the piston is just there, it's able to move, but it's not moving, and then you come along and you add heat, here's the flame. But, well, here's the question. Is it possible to add heat to the system, joules of heat go in to the gas, but the temperature does not change? Is that possible? Heat goes in, but the temperature does not go up. It stays the same. Is that possible? What do you think, Lucy? Can you repeat the question? Is it possible to add heat to the gas, but its temperature not rise? 
I want to say no, but I feel like you're going to be like, ha-ha, <laughs> <laughs> you're wrong. See, that's good. That's good. Thank you. Because, go ahead and say no. No. Aha. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> you are correct in, in worrying about saying yes. It, it sounds like if you add heat to something, the temperature ought to rise. That just seems like it all should always should happen. But look, base it back on this. This you learned yesterday, you, depends on only one thing, what? The temperature. Okay, so if I say, that if the question says the temperature does not rise, delta U is zero, isn't it? Mm -hmm. and, and then my, I'm trying to find out if this is possible. So if I plug in a zero right there, heat goes into it, that's a positive number. Is it possible then, if that's a positive number for that to be zero? It is if what? Work is if work is negative. Same number of joules. If you put in a thousand joules of heat, the system does a thousand joules of work in pushing up the piston. See, that would be negative work if the gas pushes up the piston. So the piston rises, the volume increases, uh, the system is doing work, and in doing work, it uses up joules of energy. As the heat energy comes in, it's doing work, and the energy goes out. So they add up to zero. That, in that case, the temperature would not change. All of the energy from the heat is used by the gas to raise the piston. Does that make sense? But how? All the energy coming in as heat is used by the gas to raise the piston. So the energy coming in is equal to the energy going out. Delta U is zero. Change in temperature is zero. U and temperature go together. Okay. I want to see a real life example, but I don't believe it. Um, what you, what's bothering you is how can work translate into a change in temperature? And it can. That a long time ago, someone discovered you could take a barrel of water and put a stick in it and stir it and stir it and stir it and stir it and, stir it and check the temperature and it goes up. You didn't add any heat to it. You just sloshed it around for half an hour. The temperature went up a couple of degrees. Work can make the temperature change. Yeah. You didn't add any heat or take any heat away. You just stirred it. So when they figured out that really is possible, they started tying this in with this. Oh, work can have something to do with delta U, which is, remember, proportional to temperature. Work can affect the temperature. Not Everybody agrees heat will. If you add heat, it's going to warm it up. But if you do work on it, that will warm it up too. Yeah. Okay. Pushing down on the piston could just warm up the gas. If you push down hard enough, it might just get warmer, even though there's no flame there. All right. That's all I'm going to say about that. Now what we're going to do is talk about work for a few minutes. Work. Because work is work on a gas. We're, talking, we're keeping this this image of a gas trapped in, is that visible to Sophia? Yeah, sort of. Here's the piston. Gas molecule is trapped in, in this cylinder. Okay, and what we're talking about now is work. Work, as you know, you learn is force times displacement. You learned that last year. Remember that? Well, force, you have now learned because P is F over A, force is equal to what? P times A. P times A. Right? You following this, Nate? Nate, what time did you go to bed last night, Nate? Subtract one hour from that and go to bed at that time tonight. Okay. F is PA, so instead of F, I'm going to write PA. Okay, so that's F, this is work, this is work, which is force times displacement. All right, what is this in my story over here? What is A delta X? The area times the distance is what? That's the volume of the cylinder, or the volume, or, or if it's delta X, it's the 
if the piston moves up or down, that's the change in volume because of the change in X. So that could be looked at as P delta V, couldn't it? Area times the height of the cylinder is volume of the cylinder. So that's equal to work on the gas. Pressure times the change in volume. Um, however, we have to think about the sign. If the volume is decreasing because the piston is moving down, is work positive or negative? If the piston moves down, is the work positive or negative? That's positive. And yet the volume decreased, didn't it? So if you just plug in numbers to this, that delta V would be a negative number times the pressure would be a negative number, but it's supposed to be positive, isn't it? Therefore, we have to put a negative in front of the P delta V to make the sign come out correct. So on your equation sheet, probably on your equation sheet, is this equation where work done on a gas, that's what this is for, it's not it's got to be a gas, a fluid. Really, it's got to be a gas. Can't even be a liquid because liquids don't really change volume. So this is just work done on a gas. It's equal to negative, to get the sign right, pressure times the change in volume. It is. So if you do work on the gas, the volume is going to get less. If you're pushing down, the volume decreases, so delta V would be a negative number. So a negative times a negative is positive. So when you push down, you're doing positive work. Mathematically, that would be negative here times the negative delta V. If the, if the piston rises, delta V is positive because the volume is increasing. Um, so that'd be a positive number times a positive number, but there's the negative to make it negative. So if you stick a negative into the equation, it will make the sign come out right. But again, you've got to remember that this, if the volume's decreasing, that's a negative number. If it's increasing, delta V is a positive number. And then if you, if you put that sign correct and leave the negative there, you'll get the right sign for W. All right. What does that look like on a PV diagram? Here's the great thing about this equation. Look, it's a PV diagram. It's a pressure volume graph. And pressure and volume are the two things there. Can we get the work done from the graph? Well, yeah, look, it's PV. All right, come over to my pressure volume graph. Uh, if you have a curve like this, we talked about that yesterday. And let's say it's going in that direction from point A to point B. The volume is doing what? Increasing. Increasing. So delta V would be a positive number uh, if it's going from A to B. What's the pressure doing? Decreasing. Decreasing. The pressure is going down, but um, ooh, we can't use that here. This is a good example of where you cannot use that equation. Why not? This is not delta P, it's just P. You can only use that equation as an equation. We'll, we'll talk about what to do here in a minute, but you can only use that equation if there's one number to plug in for P. All right, so let me go back and change my graph. Um, again, we'll come back to this and talk about how can you get the work if it's that, but right now let's make it easy. Let's start out easy. It goes from A horizontally to point B in that direction. Okay, now you can use that equation because there's only one pressure to look at. You read the graph, what is the, on the y-axis, that's P. Delta V would be, you know, whatever that is minus whatever that is. Get the change in volume and plug that in there. And if it's moving to the right, the delta V is a, is a positive number. See, it's the final one minus the initial one. That would be a positive number. But work would come out negative because of the sign there, and you would expect it to because what we just said was if the volume's increasing, the piston's going up, that's negative work. So here's the thing that you're just going to have to learn. It'd be best if you just learn this. When you look at a PV diagram and, and, and it's moving to the right, 
That's the positive direction on any graph on an X axis. That's positive direction. But, but the work is opposite that because of this sign right here. So if it's moving to the right, you already know work is negative. If we reverse it and say, well, the gas is going to go from B to A, make it go backwards, that would be positive work. So it's the opposite of what you might intuitively think. Because you're looking at this and you've, you've lived your whole life looking at graphs and when the dog gone, when it's moving to the left on an x-axis, that's negative. But for work on a gas, that's positive. Okay, now, graphically, how could I find the work done if I told you the gas is moving from B to A and you didn't want to just plug into that equation, so what I'm, and which you could, of course. But what I'm asking you is graphically, what is it? Area, area. area under the curve. You see that? Yeah. If it's a horizontal line, the area under the curve is a big rectangle. So just take the take take the length times the width, and 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 one of those is p, and the other one is delta v, the length times the width of that rectangle. But keep in mind. What you just learned, if it's moving to the left, then that's positive. If it's moving to the right, that's negative, and you'll get the sign right that way as well. So it's the area under the curve, but because there's a negative in front of the area under the curve, you've got to reverse the sign for what you normally think. All right, since it's the area under the curve, you could get, you could get one easily like this if it goes from A to B, and that's a straight line now, but it goes in that direction, you can get the area under that curve, can't you? Yes. Um, because this is a right triangle, and that's the hypotenuse, and you know the area of a triangle is one half base times height, but the area under the triangle would go all the way down to here as well, uh, assuming that these are at zero. Um, so it would be also the area of the triangle, which was, which was down here, whatever length times width is. And you would add those together. If you want to know how much work was done from A to B, get the area of the triangle, that's all of this area, but then the area that's below it too. It's really the entire area under the curve all the way to the x-axis. So whatever it takes for you to figure that out would be the amount of work done. But again, because it's moving to the right, that the work comes out negative. Even though it's slanted, it's still moving from the left to the right, which is the positive x direction, therefore it's negative work. So whatever the area under that entire thing is, would be the, the amount of work, but it's negative. The, the piston would be rising. See, you can see the, the volume's increasing from A to B, the volume's increasing. That means the piston's rising. That means the work is negative. So this equation becomes very important for calculating work, but, but on the graph, it's the area under the curve. You're going to use that up here a great deal when you're working problems with, with the first law of thermodynamics. Very common for them to give you this graph, and you can find work from the graph. And you realize that you can always do that, find work as the area under the curve. Okay, you can't really look at the graph and get Q, but you can look at the graph and get work, and, and you can, it's possible to look at the graph and get delta U. We talked about that a little bit yesterday. Let me ask you this question again to see if you remember this from yesterday. If a gas goes from A to B, and then it goes from B back to C, and then it goes from C back up to A and stops. What is delta U? We talked about this yesterday. Zero. Zero, because it started and stopped at the same point. So an example like that, let's just do that example. What if you're asked for what is, here are some questions about this, and we don't have numbers, so we can't really answer it, but how would you answer it? Question A is what is the net work done um, on the gas from A, B, C, back to A for the entire cycle. Add up all the work done on it. Okay, well, let's examine it.
from A to B, work is positive or negative? From A to B. Yeah, it was, I'll write this down. Work from A to B is a negative number. It's the area under that curve. From B to C, is it positive or negative? It's positive. Work done from B to C is a positive number. Which one's greater magnitude from A to B or from B to C? Which one has a greater area underneath it? The A to B. A to B goes from up here all the way down to the x-axis. B to C goes from here down to the x-axis. Well, this one's greater. So the net work from A to B to C is going to be negative. It's more. All right, did I lose you on that? Are you still with me? Mm -hmm. A to B is negative, and it's a greater area under it than B to C, which is positive. Okay, what about from C to A? How much work is done? From C to A. Is it positive, negative, or zero? Uh, it's negative. It's zero. How do you know it's zero? Oh, it's zero. What's the area underneath a vertical line? Zero. Nothing. If you looked over here, what's delta V from C to A? Zero. zero. See, the volume doesn't change. So think about area under the curve. A vertical line will always be zero work. And this is why, because delta V is zero if it's a vertical line. All right, so I'll write it up here though. From C to A, the work is zero. So if I then go back and try to answer this question, the net work for the entire uh, cycle would be positive or negative? Negative, because we said that was more than this, right? How would you look at the graph if you, if you, if, if I didn't ask you these questions, what would you think of in terms of the graph to answer the question, what is the net work for the entire cycle? It's the area Under the the of the triangle. Okay. Because this area all the way down to x minus this area from here down to the x-axis would be the area of the triangle. See in this? So if it's if the net work, the net work then can be found just as the area of the triangle. Not all the way down to the x-axis. See, that would be from A to B. But the work done from A to B to C back to A is the area of the triangle. That's it. And it would be negative because how do you know without doing math it's negative? Because the negative line is up higher on the graph than the positive line. This one represents negative work, this one positive work, but this one's more. So it is the area of the triangle, but, but the negative wins because it's up higher. So area of the triangle and it's negative. It's negative area of the triangle. That's how you get work. That's how you deal with work. That's just one thing in our equation back here, but that's how you can use this PV diagram to, to get work if you've got lines on the graph and you've got numbers on the x and y axes. You can calculate it. All right, so here's my next question. That was A. What's the net work? And that's how you'd find it. Here's question B. What is Q for the entire cycle? Or how would you find it? We don't have numbers, so you can't come up with an answer right now. But how would you find the Q, not for just one of these, but for the entire cycle? We can do that. What? The area of the triangle? But positive. Why is that, Jack? Exactly. For the whole cycle, you have learned that delta U is zero. And so, if work, if you get work by the area of the triangle, but it's negative, Q has to be that same number, but positive, doesn't it? So they've got to add up to zero. So whatever that was, negative, is going to be this positive. Does that make sense? So what's happening to the gas over here in the entire cycle, the, the 
piston, first of all, goes up from A to B. It's rising. But then it comes down from B to C. And then from C to A, it doesn't move at all. Zero work. Uh, and in the end, um, in the end, the temperature is the same as it was in the beginning. U is the same as it was in the beginning. Delta, if delta U is zero, then delta T is zero. Now the temperature was changing throughout this process, but it ends up back at the same temperature it started. Okay. Um, okay. Everybody okay with that? I want to teach you some specific processes. There's probably something I should do before this. There are four specific kinds of processes the gas can go through. They have names. But I feel like there's something else I'm leaving out. Let's see what I have not said before we do those thermal processes. I don't know. That's probably okay. Work was a big thing. Oh, I was going to go back and mention this thing I had up here a moment ago, where it's a curve. If, if it goes from A to B like this, which is very common, uh, because there is an inverse proportion there, and that's kind of the shape of an inverse proportion. Uh, so if it's going from A to B, in this class, you will not be asked to find the area under that curve because it involves more than just algebra. This is algebra-based physics. Um, there are things you can, but you need to know it is the area under the curve. You need to know it's positive if it's moving that direction, or if it's positive. Uh, and you can do some things with it in terms of average chain pressure. The pressure goes from here to here. You can get an average pressure and do some things with that. but. Um, but you will not be asked to find the area under this curve. I'm just letting you know that. Even though you've all had calculus and you can work with that, but we're not. You won't have to. That's what I'm telling you. Okay. Now let's let's do a, at least one or two of these processes that, I, that you're going to have to become familiar with. Uh, your homework over the weekend is B. Was it A last night? Now it's B. It's only, I don't know, three or four problems, I think. All right, processes. Which one should we start? Let's start with ISO Baric. There are four processes, and there's no, I don't know what order we ought to teach it, it doesn't matter. ISO means the same, prefix ISO. Bar refers to what? What's a barometer do? Pressure. pressure. <laughs> barometer measured pressure, bar refers to pressure. So this means the pressure doesn't change. In, a, in an isobaric process, in an isobaric process, the pressure remains the same. On the PV diagram, then of course that would look like uh, a horizontal line. That's an isobaric process where the volume might be changing, but the pressure stays whatever that is. The pressure remains the same. Okay, what happens to the first law of thermodynamics in an isobaric process? Well, uh, not too much. Delta U, is there a delta U from point A to B? Is, is, is there a delta U? Here's going from A to B. So here's, here's a question. Is delta U positive, negative, or zero? Negative. Work is negative. We, we just learned that. If, the, if it's moving to the right, work is negative. Does that mean delta U is negative? No. We don't know anything about Q from just the graph, but what do you think? If the, if the pressure remains constant, but the volume's increasing, the piston's going up. 
How, why would the piston go up? You're not touching it. The gas pushes the piston up. Why would it do that? You must have added heat to it. Yeah, it's not going to just push up because it felt like pushing. If you add heat to it, they start moving faster, these molecules, and they move the piston up. They, the whole gas expands. Now, that's what's, that's what's happening as it expands. Um, do you think the temperature would rise, though? You're adding heat to it. It's possible, we just talked about, that you can add heat sometimes and the, and the temperature doesn't rise, but that will always look like this. If you see this, the temperature rose. And you're going to see how later it's going to make more sense. Right now, you're just trying to think about the molecules, and it's really hard to guess. Based on what you know, that would, that would have been a hard question to answer. I get that. Okay. Um, that's positive because the temperature change is positive. Remember, U and T go together. I'm going to keep emphasizing that so you don't forget. U and T are proportional. If, if delta U is positive, then the change in temperature is positive and vice versa. Okay. Uh, the work you know is positive as well. We've learned, no, sorry, it's not positive. The work is negative. There you go. Uh, we just learned that. Uh, therefore, Q must be what? Positive. It has to be positive. You can't take a negative number here and add another negative number and get a positive, can you? So, you know Q had to be positive, and that's what we just said. You, add, you have to be adding heat for this to work. Okay. That's isobaric. The... Uh, when I ask you what happened to the equation, nothing happens. It's still delta U equals Q plus W. And, and this is what all those things would be. The W would be negative, the Q positive, and delta U would be positive. Okay. Next process. Let's do one that is isochoric. C-H-O-R-I-C. Iso again means the same, but choric refers to volume. So in an isochoric process, the volume doesn't change. That would be a vertical line on the PV diagram. The volume doesn't change. It goes from A to B. All right. If the volume doesn't change... We still want to know what happens to delta U, what happens to work, and what happens to um, delta U work Q. There you go. Easy one. Work. What do you know about work if it's isochoric? Zero. There's no area under a vertical line. Work is zero. Now, if work is zero... If you know it's isochoric, you go up here and take the W out. So now delta U just becomes equal to Q, doesn't it? Because we know work is zero for, from A to B. All right. What do you think is delta U? Delta U and Q now have to have the same sign, obviously. Do you think it's positive or negative if it goes from A down to B? Pressure is dropping. What would happen to if the pressure is dropping, but the volume doesn't change? The piston's not moving. See, but the pressure drops. The temperature had to drop, didn't it? And if the temperature drops, and, and then delta U is negative, so Q is negative. Heat is coming out of the gas. This is where you take the cylinder and you dump it in a bucket of ice. Heat goes out of the gas. Q is negative. Delta U is negative, the temperature goes down. So that's negative, that's negative. It, it, if, if it's down. Now, if you reverse it, if you change the arrow to up, it's the opposite. Now, uh, heat's going in and delta U is positive, the temperature is going to rise. A is at a higher temperature than B. A is at a higher temperature than B. A moment ago, we had this, and we said B was at a higher temperature than A. 
Okay. It's helpful if you if you get in your head what these different shapes on this graph look like and what they mean. And this is you're still new, so but you'll get all this in your head before you ever get to a test. All right, that's two processes. So let's do a third one. A third one is called isothermal. There's the iso again means the same therm. You might guess wrong, but what do you think therm means? It, does it mean heat or temperature? Because they're not the same thing. Temperature. It means temperature. There's another term for heat. We're going to get to it later. Maybe Monday. But what this means is the temperature does not change. The temperature. Delta U does not change then. Okay. That would be the, or look like a curve like this. Now, if you're told it's isothermal, now not all curves are, are isothermal. You can't just look at that curve and say, oh, the temperature doesn't change. No, uh, because there are other curves where the temperature doesn't change. But, but if it is isothermal, it would be curved like this. And what that means is at every point on that line, the gas is at the same temperature. It never changes. But the pressure is changing and the volume is changing, isn't it? If it's going that direction, we talked about earlier, that means the volume's increasing, the piss is going up, but the pressure's going down. If the piss is going up, but the pressure's going down, the temperature's staying the same, is that possible? Yeah, if it's, if it's gaining heat. Okay. If it, uh, let me finish that. If it's gaining heat, then the molecules move faster, they push the piston up, temperature never changes. We talked about that at the beginning of the period today. That's a possibility. If the amount of heat going in is equal to the work done, then, then the temperature never changes. Okay. What happens to my equation up here? What do I know can be deleted from this equation? Delta U. Well, or, or just don't delete it, but put a zero there. Uh, if, if you're told it's iso isothermal, that's the definition of it. The temperature doesn't change, therefore U doesn't change. So now you've got zero is equal to Q plus W. So you could write that as, as Q is equal to negative W, couldn't you? Or just keep thinking of it this way. Now, if you could get the work done from the area under the curve or from anything, you, you've got Q as well. They're just the opposite sign of each other. And when we talked about one like this earlier today, too. That's isothermal. This, this curve is called an isotherm. So, so if you see that in a question, oh, here's a PV diagram, and it's an isotherm. Well, that, that means the temperature is the same everywhere on that curve. That's what it means. Okay, there's one last one, which we won't talk about because the, the bell's about to ring, but I'm going to give you its name. And it is adiabatic. It doesn't start with ISO, sorry. <laughs> adiabatic process. Adiabatic it is also a curve like this. It's not the same slope or steepness, but um, Q is zero in an adiabatic. That means no heat goes in or comes out. Q is zero. So in that case, delta U equals the work. See? For an adiabat, delta U, delta U is equal to W because Q is zero. We'll come back and talk about adiabats. In fact, we'll talk about all four of these. We rushed through them pretty fast today. And we'll work some problems and you'll become familiar with them. I don't think your homework over the weekend has anything to do with the processes, or maybe it does. Yeah, I don't know. Um, but it's definitely on this first law of thermodynamics. It's a few problems. Okay, we're going to stop. Thanks, Sophia. It's been a lot of fun. Uh, or the rest of you, stop. stop. The rest of you who have been watching, probably millions from Liechtenstein, um, thanks for joining us. Bye.